ladies and gentlemen, they call it the Sunshine State, but it's never been brighter than it is tonight. We are here, we are in Florida, and it is Mr. Oscar 2021. Welcome, my name is... Yeah! My name is Chris, and I'll be one of your co-hosts for the evening, a star-studded evening, handing out these beautiful Han Solos. Here are my two other co-hosts. Hey, it's... The man with the beard is ready to get weird. It's Tud. <laughs> and will you guys hand me my, my sunglasses? It's so bright from all of these stars in the sunshine state. It's Obert. I mean, the sun technically is a, is a star, so it works, okay? <laughs> it does work. <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Oscar 2021. Oh, man. We look forward to it all year. The, how was, uh, how was the, the red carpet walk for y'all? I, we got separated around, around mile 20, so... Yeah, I'm like six beers deep from the walk, and uh, my feet are aching. But uh, we made it. We made it to the end with the Bucks. They're all here. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Except for Tom. 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 Tom was not allowed. It was. It was quite the ordeal. Um, as discussed on the pregame. If you're not a Patreon subscriber, head on over to Patreon and subscribe so you can hear the pregame. But as we disclosed in the pregame, the uh, the horse the horse didn't make it. Uh, he had to stop halfway through, and um, I think he's just sleeping. I mean, he's been kind of laying there for a little bit, but I think he's just resting. He'll, he's he'll just, be good. He's to, just resting, just to rest. Yeah, he'll be good to go. Yeah, soon. we we let the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive line take the load from him. So now. Uh, Carrying all those Han Solo's life size, of course, that we are of course. so eager to award to the winners tonight. It's a, it's our favorite time of year. It really is. It really is. I'm actually I'm already looking forward to Mr. Oscar twenty twenty two. Like that's how that's how excited I am for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh they say uh, you know, you hear it, you hear it, you know, sit back, enjoy it. Because it goes by so fast, it only mm-hmm. happens. You know, um, th- you normally take lots of pictures. Take lots of pictures. Enjoy your food. Enjoy your cake. You know, th- yep. they, people think that that was originally said about a wedding, but actually, um, it was talked. To, it was Mr. Oscar. Mr. Oscar. That's what. That's what it came from. And, I mean, uh, I, I, I do. We want to disclose that we've been in talks to 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 change. You know, it's the most wonderful time of the year to 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 our song for this episode or for this event. Um, I mean, I don't know. Well, there's so many, so much litigation going on with that, but we're not talking about that. You know, we're talking about, we're talking about just like <clears throat> a star studded event. Han Solo's everywhere. All the stars. All of the stars, including the sun. <laughs> Every single star. Uh, it's, we, had to, we had to clone Harrison Ford a dozen times for this event. It is crazy. Yes. We would just clone him and they, he would, he would, we had to start. We had, we had to start 30 years ago. Exactly. <laughs> we, we cloned Harrison Ford a bunch of times. Raised him up just to freeze him in carbonite, just for the people here. So, Hey, quick question um, about asking if you feel old. Uh, do you guys feel old thinking about the fact that you're probably older than Harrison Ford was when he was first in Star Wars? I, I was actually just thinking, I was like, how old was he when he was in Star Wars? He was probably like 20. Didn't think about that. Now I feel old. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, it's, it, I mean, I feel old constantly, just all the time. I'm constantly reminded by how old I am. But now, yeah, for real. It's like I could have been Star Wars. Well, you do hang around with, with people who are like 1 30th of your age all the time. So. <laughs> and you know what? That'll uh, make you feel old. Yeah. And, and, you know, there, and there's the people, the, there's some of the people I like the most in the world are these, <laughs> these, these, <laughs> these youngins that are one uh, 30th and one tenth of my age. And it's even better now because the one tenth of my age person now calls, says I'm the biggest, strongest daddy in the world. And I'm like, hell yeah, I am. let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. You are correct. You are correct. CJ. <laughs> He's like, you're such a big, strong dad. I'm like, yeah, I am a big, strong dad. <laughs> oh, man. Fun fact. So. Harrison Ford was 35 in the first Star Wars. Okay, so. we still have time, guys. Oh, we good. got some time. Oh, nice. Oh, sweet. See, and just like that, <laughs> you find out that you can be in Star Wars. Like, in two years, I'm going to be in Star Wars. I'm so excited. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm not old anymore. I'm good. 
Yeah. You could still go one year before being cast and, and say that you look like a young Harrison Ford, a pre-Star Wars Harrison Ford. That is true. No one's, no one's going to know. Yeah. Yeah, me, no, and, that, me and Harrison uh, Ford are like twins. Harrison Ford looked exactly like me when he was before Star Wars. And on top <laughs> of that, if, if you don't get your big break in the next couple of years, you can always be like, well, I mean, I'm still, there's always the fugitive. I could be cast much later in life. Mm. <laughs> That's true. And still, uh, still plenty of time before my big break. That's true. That's true. I mean, I guess, long story short, just never, get, never give up. Uh, never give up. You heard it here first. So, we like to so, open every Mr. Oscars with an inspirational story yeah. like that. Never give up, never <laughs> surrender. You heard it here. Chris from Drinking Alone with Friends. You can quote that for the rest of history. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm super excited. Wow, I can't believe I'm going to win my own my own Mr. Oscar one day. Now that I'm thinking about it. Someday you, too, can be frozen in carbon. <laughs> and out an award show, Chris. <laughs> Just start cloning yourself now. Uh, if there's any artists out there, we need an, we need an inspirational quote. <laughs> We're going to start selling inspirational posters. <laughs> uh, well, oh, we all know we can't hand out the awards until we get through some beer reviews. And I say get through. I mean enjoy. I don't want to say we're going to rush it. Right, We're right. going to take our time and savor these awards. I mean the reviews. But uh, who wants to start this week? I'll go first. So, um, with that. It's beer 30, and I'm thirsty. And I've been working like a dog all week long, so maybe something cold won't hurt me. Because it's beer 30, and it's time to party. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. All right, so this week I brought a special beer in celebration of Mr. Oscar, and it is a beer by a brewery that we all know and love um omni polo Ooh, we do love and know them very much yeah also fun, solid beer uh, solid fun fact fun fact about omni polo they just announced that they were going to be selling their beer in all ikeas that's all uh right. that's the match that's the that's the crossover we've always wanted well it's it's a swedish store and a swedish brewery and they decided to have a baby and this is what happened. I mean, that does that does that makes sense. That tracks. I can't wait to try their some assembly required double IPA. Oh <laughs> man, it was, it's gonna be so good. Do you think they're gonna brew a beer with the Swedish meatballs from IKEA? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> I mean, unless, but if anyone could pull it off, it would be them. That's they true. did it with a hamburger. That is also true. Yeah. So this week I brought a beer called Bianca. It is one of many in a series of beers that Omni Polo has released over the over the recent months. Um, and they're all Lassie Goes Sours. So this one is called Bianca Blueberry Blackberry Raspberry Strawberry Maple Pancake Lassie Goza. Now, is Lassie Goza a style? I don't know. I know Goza is a style. Okay. I don't you know what it sound a... like. You knew the answer to that question when you no, introduced them as a. Lassie I don't know Gosa. what a. I don't know what a Lassie is. Can you spell it? L A S S I. Oh, like the dog. I thought. I think the dog had an E at the end. I'm pretty sure the dog had an E. Ted, oh, there's no E. Okay. So that was a very big. That was a very big name. Can, can you run it one more time? Because there was like a so you named so many fruits. Yes. <laughs> they all ended in berry. <laughs> so I figured that this was a good beer for me to bring, given our love of fruits: blueberry, blackberry, raspberry, strawberry, maple pancake, lassi goza. Damn. Okay. That's. A lot. That's a lot of stuff that happened. Yes. To, to further complicate the matters, it is a sour ale with blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, lactose, sugar, vanilla, and maple syrup added. Wow. Damn. Holy cow. And uh, I have to interject with some information I found from Wikipedia on the article for Lassie, and then it says at the top, not because with Lassie with an E at the end. So we got that right away. <laughs> but uh, it's a yogurt-based drink or regional name for buttermilk in like a bunch of Himalayan regions. So a bunch of Central Asian regions. So it's like a cultured milk drink yogurty thing. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. It's like a smoothie. Yeah. And when you Google Lassi Gosa, the only thing that pops up is Omni Polo. So it seems like they're the only ones who's doing who are doing that. All right. So as you guys can see, the can has a nice, weird, feathery, I think it's a feather, a feather design on it. Uh, purple can. 
It is a 500 milliliter can, as Obert had informed me pre-podcast. Uh, so that means it's it's slightly bigger than a normal 16 ounce can. It's uh, one pint, 0.9 fluid ounces. It's an, an English pint. Yes. So let's uh let's crack this sucker open and see what we got. I'm very intrigued. So many berries. All the berries. All the berries. Plus milkshake in terms of yogurty milkshake. Right? Oh yeah. Dang. There's gonna be so much. There's gonna be so much happening. Lick it, Lick the can good. That's what Ted says. <laughs> I don't want to make a mess. <laughs> All right. So, Ooh. it is blood red. Yes. Um, it doesn't come across through the video camera too much except for the head. Um, that head is pretty persistent. It poured really nicely. But yeah, it is the it is definitely blood red and all I smell is fruit. Um, let me let me get my nose in here a little bit. That head is beautiful, by the way. It's a beautiful looking beer. On the nose, I get a lot of berries, a lot of tart berry smells um it definitely smells like a hodgepodge you know like those like mrs smith pies that you get that are like the mixed all berry pie yeah that's yeah. what this that's what this smells like like that type of tartness i get on the nose also with a very healthy dash of maple syrup mm. it definitely smells like i have a pancake in front of me that's smothered with berries and doused with maple syrup i think that sounds amazing yeah it does Let's it sounds really good yeah I don't even know if I can hold back with any more nose taste. I think I just have to dive right on in. Wow. That is... Yeah, absolutely terrible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, whew. There's a lot going on in here. It's definitely sour, so let's get the easy things out of the way. It's definitely sour. I definitely taste a lot of maple syrup on the back end. It's, it's extremely fruity. Um, it just tastes like there was just a... It, there's just a puree of berries in this beer. I can't pick one beer or I can't pick one berry out of the bunch. I mean obviously blueberries are much more mild than the other seventeen berries that are in this damn thing. Um but it's like a mixed berry Yeah, smoothie. very yeah, very much a mixed berry smoothie. It's it's incredibly thick. Um thick think thick like a stout. Um so it's very thick. It sticks on the tongue. Um it's got that nice tartness up front that kind of fades off into a maple syrup. Um nice weird sour maple syrup flavor which is really cool um you know, so you the, said the, a lot of maple syrup on the back end so does that mean you hit like is it is it sweet on the back end then or is it just like straight up sour the whole way through it's it's definitely sour the whole way through but it's sweet as well at first it starts off sweet like a berry and then it ends sweet like maple syrup um but also tart like you get that like like if you took raspberries and dunked them in syrup and stuck them in your mouth like that's the type of flavor that you're gonna get like that sour fruity sweetness if that makes sense mm. yeah 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 sounds amazing it sounds it is, really good it is really really good um it doesn't taste like beer like this is the point where i like i wonder that's exactly what i was is this a beer <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking if you took this beer review and you took it in a time machine to like 2010, people would say that you were not reviewing a beer. I I, I think I tend to agree with that assessment. Um, you know, I guess it is a new it's a new world and we're all just kind of living in it. Um, but this is there's no beer to this beer if that makes sense. Like there's no beer flavors. I don't get any malt flavor. I don't get any hop flavor. It's just literally fruits and syrup. With a nice mouthfeel from that lactose sugar. Um, maybe a hint of vanilla, but I don't really get a lot of it. I think the maple syrup way overpowers any type of vanilla flavor that you may get left behind. Um, it's. I guess that's a question is, you know, is what constitutes a beer and what doesn't. Uh no, I get that a lot with the fruited smoothie sours, kind of. I get that same feeling where I'm like, this is barely a beer anymore. And part of me just wonders if it wasn't just, you know, dry hopped, quote unquote, with massive amounts of fruit and just a you know a whole gallon of maple syrup because that's really what it tastes like that they, they, they took hundreds of pounds of berries and a whole gallon of you know vermont maple syrup and just mixed them into yeast and said ferment to give me a seven percent abv beer i mean they may have done that omnipolar <laughs> right in ikea yeah. right in <laughs> please please uh, let us know yeah i mean they, there's a chance i mean I've, we've met the guys from or i've met the guys from omnipolo before and they may listen. I mean, we do have some European listeners, so. That's very true. Very true. Hi. Buenos dias. Bonjour. <laughs> um, overall, I'm going to give this a very good beer. I'm going to give this, 
I'm going to give it a four and a half. Uh, I think it's it's excellent. I don't know if I can quite give it a four seven five, just because I I don't. It's not it's not a beer. Like if that makes sense. Like this is more just yeah. a smoothie. No, we 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 can hear it in your review. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. Chris looks confused. No, I I, I mean I knew you were going to give it a high rating. I really thought you might have done a four four seven five, but you know I didn't realize and you it, were anti beer. Yeah, and it probably deserves the four seven five rating based on how I review other beers. It's just at at what point in time is this a beer and is it not a beer? So I'm gonna give man, it a four and a half. Time is a man made construct. What is it, man? <laughs> it's too much of a Ryan Heinzkaboot follower to give this a four seven five. <laughs> this definitely does not follow Ryan Heinzkaboot protocol. Yeah. All right. So if you were to say look it up on Untapped and. Uh, Say 3,330 people checked it in. Oh, which you is, gotta wait till two more check it in, Todd. I know, I know. Which is <laughs> which is which is higher than I thought it was gonna be. I don't know. I, I felt like I know Omnipolo is a big one, but uh, I, I don't know. It's higher than I thought. So what do you think? Oh, there's the board. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say I think it's gonna be high. I, I can't see anybody hating this beer. Um, and when I mean anybody, I mean literally everybody, whether you're a beer drinker or not. So I'm going to say on the untapped diverse, I think they're going to be riding with me on this one. 4.47 is my guess. Wow. That's really high. It, I'm shooting I, for the moon. So it, it, you did shoot for the moon and, uh, you landed amongst the stars. You landed among, like. Yeah. Yeah. You landed amongst the stars, maybe even the sun. <laughs> it's a very sun themed episode. Um, so it is very high. It's not quite that high. 4.32. So 0.15 off. Um, but it, it honestly, it sounds like I would give it five stars. Uh, it sounds like uh, amazing, amazing beer. So I'm surprised it's that low. Like that's, you know, that means that there were some people out there who didn't like it. That's, that's interesting. And maybe those are just like the beer purists or just, too. Yeah. A bunch of people, a bunch of people gave it a four. Yeah. I mean, like I have two friends who gave it a four and a four and a quarter. Just, just looking real fast. So, um, so yeah, there you go. Not bad. Hey, 0.15. Come on. Put it on the board. Put it on the board. All right. So now that I'm done with my review, I'm gonna I'm gonna hand this this review segment off to Obert. Obert, why don't you? Well, first, why don't you listen to some music while you get your Ten. beer ready? Okay. Thanks, Tud. I actually um, excited to bring this brewery on. I saw them randomly on Jenna's Instagram feed at the Brew Locker. Okay. Um, and this seems like an interesting brewery. I never heard of it before. I saw it in the the bottle shop in Missoula. This is from Bombastic Brewing, and it's called Murder on Drury Lane. Uh, Drury Lane, Drury Lane. I don't know. D-R-U-R-Y. That's the Drury Lane, right? What do you guys Isn't that where say? the Muffin Man lives? Yes. What do you say? I say Drury. I think it's Drury. Okay, Drury. I, I have. I think I have a hard time saying that word. Drury. <laughs> Drury. Drury. People make Drury. fun of me for saying brewery the way I say think, it. So. Think brewery. I think it maybe it's a Connecticut thing. It might be murder on Brewery Lane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I have a question um, for you before you review this. Do you know the Muffin Man? The Muffin Man. The Muffin Man. <laughs> the Muffin Man. The, mu- the Muffin Man who lives on Drury Lane. Exactly. Uh, a throwback to like one of the best, the one of the, like the many great moments in Shrek. Great Shrek quotes right there. What a great you know movie! That Shrek is Shrek is twenty years old this year. Oh God! That's you like know what? It's two still just as funny. Of an Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not though. We no, know it's not. Nominee um, for Mr. Osk. Okay, it's movie twenty twenty two. Shrek. Yeah, really. So, so this murder on Drury Lane is a rich pastry stout serving layers upon layers of chocolate from premium Dutch cocoa and dozens of double chocolate muffins, a perfect beer to enjoy for dessert. So, and I love, I love a good chocolate muffin. I'm a, I'm a big fan of dessert for breakfast. I know it's cake. Doesn't stop me. <laughs> I, I will say I'm surprised that this beer with a name like that does not have gingerbread man in it. Mm, well, that's very much a Shrek thing, I think, right? Uh, ooh, poor sm- Silky Smooth here. It looks amazing. Yeah, quite the head on it. Almost a crisp pour here. But uh, sim- very simple black and white graphic. There's a couple of cr- ravens eating a cake. Looks like a triple layer chocolatey chocolate cake coming out of a skull. Um, yeah, just a cool, 
logo. It's called an imperial stout with Dutch cocoa powder, Tahitian vanilla, lactose, and do- dozens of double chocolate muffins. Nice. So, Haley, Idaho. I've heard of that town. A friend of mine's from Haley. Christine, if you're listening, cheers. Cheers, um, Christine. Welcome to being yeah. shouted out on the podcast. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, yeah, I gotta, I gotta talk more about this beer while we let the head die down. How do you guys, how are you guys doing tonight? You guys having fun? <laughs> you having fun on the podcast? There's so, there's so many the seasons, so many seasons that. That's a, that's it's a, very that's thick. a thick head. Uh, yeah. it, I mean, it, it's a very tasty looking head. It's got that like typical dark beer, dark brown caramel. Chris knows a tasty head when he sees one. Very good at it. Wait, what? No, that's all I meant. <laughs> <laughs> It's Southern. sticking around too. Like it's a long lasting head too. It's it's very consistent. Yes. Yeah. Consistent, I mean, persistent, some might say. Long lasting head is the best head. Everybody knows oh, yeah. everybody knows that. For sure. <laughs> Sometimes you get that like really like this big head, but then it goes away too fast and you're like, Oh, what happened to my head? <laughs> <laughs> this uh, this head's sticking around for a long time. Especially when but, you make the uh, beer mad sometimes. <laughs> it's just like, oh no. <laughs> okay, with that, I'll take a sip. <laughs> Got to worry about being bit from the beer. <laughs> oh no, this is bad. Kiwi, what tastes did you muffin-y. do? It tastes muffiny, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> it's all Kiwi's fault. All right, let me get into this review here before we get too far off the rails. Yeah, Obert's like, I got to steer this shit back on. The, I know. The, 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 the I know. <laughs> Very chocolatey. This is a family and I don't know podcast. if you've, you've noticed, but I've had quite a few um, pastry stouts on the last couple of weeks. They're they're filling up my fridge. I'm slowly emptying them, uh, but uh, it's a little hard for me sometimes to distinguish them apart from each other. Like you know, we've talked about so many different um, New England IPAs, and you're like, how many different ways can we say grapefruity and hazy? This is like okay, it's chocolate and vanilla, but they added this little twist of muffin. So let's see if I can get some of that muffin flavor out of it. I hope they used mini muffins. Well, they said dozens and dozens, so that would be a very economical way to fulfill that promise. <laughs> it's like I, it's like four, four or five packs, four or five packs of yeah. mini muffins. As, I love as mini muffins. I just looked up at to where our mini muffins are. <laughs> mini muffins are great. It's the greatest invention that somebody's ever in, invented. Was saying, you know what? We can turn muffins into smaller things that are healthier. I'm all are in. they really healthier though? Well, not if you eat 17 packs, but if you eat one pack of mini muffins, I think you get the not same. I think we've had, this, we've had this conversation somewhat recently about donut holes. <laughs> <laughs> Ted, has a, Ted has a hard time stopping at just one. So he's like, if, if the bite size is already taken for me, and this is going to be how much is in one bite, it's perfect. I can do this with one muffin. I can do this with one donut hole. Correct. Ted's a big fan. Um, I'm more of like the... The uh, Kevin from the office school of thought where, like, he says mini cupcakes. Like, cupcakes are already smaller cake. <laughs> what's, what's wrong with you people? Where will you stop? Muffins are small enough. We don't need mini muffins. That is that is true. That is true. I'm I'm not much of a... I mean, I guess I, I won't discriminate. I won't discriminate. I'll eat a mini muffin. But I prefer regular muffin. I mean, yeah. I, I also, too, prefer a muffin to a mini muffin. Did but- we also... No, maybe it was on stream. Sorry. Did we but talk I do... about selling just muffin tops? Did we do that? Was that this? Was that this podcast? Was that stream? That was a Seinfeld episode. It was a Seinfeld episode. Okay, well, there's a whole I episode came up about up it. the muffin to you. Oh, I don't know. I remember there was a mug and the the beer was a top of a muffin. It was a whole thing. But anyways, okay, never mind. This was not. No, it was at work. Okay, never mind. You had beer at work. Wait, no. hang on. <laughs> I was, well, when I used to work with Jen, Jen is a a baker by by not by trade but by education and uh we, like we were talking about the best part of the cupcake is the top of the cupcake obviously obviously and uh we were going to we were going to open a a bakery slash brew pub uh where we only had tops of muffins and cupcakes and uh and had like craft beer it's a really good idea and it was going to be just the head just yeah just the head. <laughs> just the head of the beer right and that's the name of <laughs> that's the name of your establishment no, nothing but head. It's just nothing but head, and then underneath it says cupcakes, muffin, craft, bre- craft beers. Head Foamy and mu- craft beers. <laughs> muffin tops and head. Every, and then underneath it says, in quotes, every, every pour a crisp pour. I, they, don't, they don't know what that means. I've, I've got a good cupcake eating hack for y'all. If you rip off the bottom 
of the cupcake and put it on top of the cu- cupcake, on top of like the frosting. Then you've turned it into like a, a cupcake sandwich. That way your like hands a frosting look, sandwich. Yeah, that way you don't your hands don't get messy from the frosting, and you can actually eat it better, and so your face doesn't get covered in frosting too. I, okay, I like so face face covering, yes, that makes sense. How are you eating a cupcake now, where <laughs> frosting on your hands is an issue? Well, no, but like like it just it's it's Grab cleaner, it it's easier. I, I get yeah. it. I, I, I do. You, do I have to stick it on the bottom, or can I just flip it upside down in the middle? You could flip it upside down in the middle if you wanted okay, to. Good. I'm glad I have your permission. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that's okay. how you, that's how you that's how you eat a cupcake as an adult. <laughs> It's an adult cupcake eating hack. Now I know I've been eating cupcakes as a child this whole time. So. <laughs> now my my goal to avoid the, the frosting on my my like face and mustache area is to just try and shove it all in my mouth in one bite. <laughs> <laughs> I avoid this whole thing. <laughs> that reminds me of another story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we are two reviews in at 36 minutes. So we got to get through this. <laughs> okay. We have Mr. Oscars to get uh, to. I'll tell my Muffin stories later. <laughs> yeah, save the Muffin story for next pregame. I'm going to write it down so I forget. Yeah. Okay, so back to the beer review. I told you I could taste the coconut. I mean, I could taste the cocoa. I can taste the Tahitian vanilla. But can I taste the dozens and dozens of double chocolate muffins is the question. And I don't know if it's my brain's... My brain playing tricks with me. Sometimes people will say a flavor and you're like, oh, yeah, I can pick it up. But I do get that that sweet bread muffiny flavor of like a, um, you know, it's a pastry style. I get that pastry flavor of that that bready quality, um, that semi-sweet chocolate of a chocolate chip. I like this more than more than some of the other pastry styles I had on from that one's walking. I think I like this one a little bit more. Um, still, I'm realizing and I hate. I don't want to knock the whole genre down a peg, but pastry stouts, I think I'm kind of over them. It's like tw- 12 ounces of a pastry stout is as much as I can really handle. And we talked about calories and beers, and I'm like, do I save my calories for an unfiltered IPA? Then a pastry stout. That being said, this very good beer, which we didn't get a chance to talk a lot about, but <laughs> we made a lot of jokes instead. <laughs> this is going to get a 375 from me. Um, and I want to know more about Bombastic Brewing. Hopefully I can find them again. Love to have them on the show again. But yeah, 375. Um, flirting with a four. Not quite four territory. Not feeling super generous today, I guess. Um, can someone tell me how many how many check-ins this murder on brewery slash brewery lane has? Yes, so there are 1,145 rated check-ins on Untapped. Okay. Um, I think people are going to like it. I don't think they're, they're going to love it. Um, wish I was... I, you'd think I'd be better at this by now. But uh, 4.13. So it is a three point nine four. Okay. Uh, so, so almost like right point, with you. One point one nine off, leaving the, leaving a, a little bit of room for Chris to come in. Still point one five. I'm out of contention here. Put it on the board. Put it on the board. Everybody knows if you uh, become man of the people and your name is Chris on the Mister Oscar edition, it is like of course fifteen twenty check marks and over. You know. You can't like you don't don't knock yourself. Look at those two extremely long check marks you got over they're pretty there. Big. They're pretty big. They're lie. pretty large check uh, uh, <laughs> dash marks, tally marks. So <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I like how over panned the camera away from the board. So uh, so we can't channel our some shenanigans. Our, can occur. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. So let me ask you over just real quick because I noticed that there's two variations on Untapped. Do you think? Oh. Do you think a caramel brownie edition would be better? I, would I do. Love to try them side by side because my biggest complaint with these pastry stouts is like I'm so overwhelmed by like a wave of chocolatey fudginess that I have a hard time of discerning the other flavors. Mm. So I would like to have those two and be like, can I taste the muffin versus the fud- the brownie? And uh, the caramel. See how much you can really pull it out because it's just like such a such a fudge bomb on my tongue. Yeah. Do you do you think that your your lack of being impressed with these styles of stouts is due to the fact that you're drinking them too cold? No. I mean, I've let them warm up. I've drank them cold. I've drank them hot. I'm like at this point, I'm basically Sam. I am and how green how hot? Am. How hot? <laughs> I've I'm not gonna. Lie. So I've drank this beer 
I probably had pastry stouts in uh, on a train in the rain. I definitely had them <laughs> in a box with a fox. I mean, there's a lot of places I've drank these pastry stouts <laughs> at this point. But I'll um I will hold this beer in my hand like the Statue of Liberty for the rest of the episode, and then somewhere around like the seventh nomination of Mr. Oscar. I can give you like a 98.6 degree rating. Okay. Because so. that's what I was told by a brewer this past weekend was to drink them. Like make sure that like you let them get to like 60. Because I kind of have really? this. I kind of have a similar complaint. And he, he's, yeah, he had a uh, an Oreo, caramel Oreo pastry stout that had to be like heated up to like 60 degrees. But everything now, pours out of the tap at the same temp. Yeah. And I mean, that might be his personal preference. That might be the professional opinion of professional beer tasters, but I have not read that on a single can of any of these pastry stouts that I've tried. It did so change the flavor. If that's like, the advice, I haven't heard it. Like, it did change the flavor of the one I had. Like, I got coconut all of a sudden once it was warmer. Didn't mm-hmm. get coconut at all at the beginning. That is interesting. I uh, Yeah, I 60 degrees is... It's, that is hot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But... I think it's my turn, right? My turn to go. I believe yeah. so. Sweet. Point one five, Chris. Point one five. That's it's it. open. It, it, you it's know, not wide open, but it's open. It is the door open. Is a jar. It is open. We've gotten we've gotten way closer than that. I'm I, I'm trying not to get too too cocky right now. Okay, <laughs> trying not to let it go to my head. I need those fifteen tally marks. Um, so I brought something very very uh, special. I think to the podcast uh, from our friends friends at Deschutes Brewing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like to shoots a lot. Uh, yeah, I ha- I've had, I've obviously had some of their stuff. I haven't had a ton, but this one uh, jumped out at me. Um, it is a, it's called Black Butte, uh, in thirty two. So it's for their thirty second anniversary. Since... Yeah, we've talked about this. Um, I sent you this beer. Did you send me this beer? Yes. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Did you have this beer on the podcast? Had any Deschutes before is my guess. I don't think you can find it near you. I don't think you can either. I feel like i've had it before but maybe not maybe not i've heard of them that's for dang true but i've t- i've had them several times on the show maybe that's they're like what it the, is they're the harpoon of the northwest i'm gonna have to look i'm gonna look it up i'm gonna, well I'm, i'll look it up later it doesn't matter right now but i okay maybe this is my first to shoot beer then this is exciting but it, it sounds really good have you had this beer i though? perked up, i perked up when you said to shoots because i was like oh he's got a to shoots beer and then when you had that i was like oh yeah i said him this one Okay. I have had this one. I gave one to both of you. I had a four pack. I saved one for each of you. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, well, they do they do the Black Butte every year. It's like an anniversary release. Um, yeah, I want I want you have the bottle there, so you take it away. But I'm excited to hear what you think. No, I'm no, I'm excited now. I thought I it's just been sitting in my fridge, so I thought it was like something I just picked up somewhere. So, but hey, well, thank you. <laughs> The black uh, so butt. black black buddy um the black butte uh it's an imperial porter brewed with coffee vanilla nutmeg and orange peel aged in rum barrels so a uh, lot going on it does uh it's 13.4 percent um so that's fun and it's almost a year old i didn't even realize that oh goodness okay uh this is 6 16 20 so it's been uh it's been it's been aging for a while uh, yeah, Black Butte 33 is coming out soon. And actually, there's there's a bar near me. Sorry, I don't want to hijack your review. There's a bar near me that has done, like, vertical tastings where they've had, like, tap takeovers of, like, three or four different years of the kegs Ooh. in a row, like, which is cool. That it's is, cool to try them all. That is cool. That is cool, yeah. So this is – so my point was it's it's fine that you've waited a year. No, I'm happy about it. Like, I just didn't realize – I guess I didn't realize – I mean, it was – born the same year i was so <laughs> i should have known what its age was uh but that being said uh um <clears throat> i'm i'm very excited uh again thank you thank you over i really thought that this was something i just had i guess ah uh, whatever um so <laughs> here we go let's see Ooh, smells rummy let's pour the thing let's, do this. let's go and drink some beer, beer! All right, so we're going to drink some beer. So as you can expect, uh, Dark as Night, 1 billion SRM. Um, the head dissipated pretty uh, – well, it's 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 very – it's not as thick as a stout would be, so to say. Uh, but it's 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 there. It's it's just barely there. It's hanging on. How thick, how thick do you like your head, Chris? So, so thick and long-lasting. 
<laughs> Thick and long lasting head is the best head. Um I mean I definitely get the uh like uh the rum barrels. The rum comes through pretty pretty strong on the nose. Uh more so th- more so than just about anything. Um this is uh it's probably if I had to guess it's probably like forty, forty five degrees maybe. It's b- been out for a little bit so it's it's definitely warming up i definitely get like i said the rum and i get like an like an aged like an aged beer smell you know like like beer that smells older stale but i don't know if that's that's not i don't think the right the stale right, in a good way stale in a good way like if i were like <laughs> yeah, if, I were a, if i were a duck and i saw some stale bread like that's the kind of excitement you know <laughs> yes. like duck at stale you were bread. A duck for this beer <laughs> Uh, so let's let's see let's see what it's like so so this is very good the rum let me see you get the rum pretty strong it's not it's not like a kick in the face but you definitely are like whoa there's definitely some colombian rum barrels in here so um <laughs> who's aged oh, so, in Col- so rum and cocaine yeah there you go yeah. <laughs> and the nominees are <laughs> pep in your beer um, so uh but you know really really smooth for 13.4 percent um you can definitely taste the you can taste the alcohol but um that's not surprising it being rum barreled um but it's it's very smooth you get in the nut i get the nutmeg in the coffee pretty strong i get some of that uh some of that like i mean i always equate nutmeg taste to cinnamon and i know that they're close they're like relatives they always hang out together but you know more of that like uh spice uh, a little bit of the spice and the coffee taste the orange peels i'm not getting as much of it says sweet orange peels let me try it let me let me take another sippy poo yeah any any citrus at all okay okay no on the very on the it's 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 very slight i got it on, on that sip i got it way more um it's very slight Adds a little bit of nice sweetness and a little bit of refresh, refreshing like citrus taste on the end. Um, I get a lot more coffee than anything else, which again, not an issue for me. Love coffee. <laughs> this is a very, very pro coffee podcast. Um, <laughs> one quarter of our handles say so. Uh, three out of four handles. Uh, but anyways, and uh, yeah, no, it's um, it's really, really solid. It's you know, I haven't had a lot of age, age barrel age stuff recently. I had one not that long, a couple weeks ago, but other than that, this is like really, really good. Um, and for being a porter, I will say porters are normally not my. I'd prefer a stout every day of the week, you know. But um, it it doesn't have like it. Porters to me are always like a little bit thin, and this is not that um, because of the added complexity that they put into it. So. Um, it's really good. I mean, you get kind of hit pretty, you hit, get hit up front with the rum taste, which lasts throughout, um, the tones of coffee, the vanilla sweets it up a smidge. And then right towards the end is where I get a little bit of the orange peel. Um, so I mean, now one flavor I got that I didn't hear you mention. Um, and I just want to ask because it was very prominent to me. I got a lot of that anise slash black licorice flavor. Did you get any of that? Maybe, I mean, maybe a little bit, um, Mm. I will say that, like, I'm very sensitive to that flavor because I'm not a fan. Yeah. So um, it's – and we've talked on this on the pod about this, about how, like, sometimes the flavors you like the least are the ones that you pick out the most. Uh, so I was just curious on your take on that. I mean, I can, I can see it or I can taste it um, kind of, like, right in the middle. Like, right in the middle is, like, the – is where I – where I can see it perceived that way, I thought it was just the rum take like tapering off and picking up with the orange. I thought it was like that transition right there, which is kind of weird. Um, where the cocaine kicks, in. yeah, where the cocaine kicks in. That's like my favorite part. It's my favorite. That's of the, the beer. good part, and it's really it's good. The good part. And uh, but um, <laughs> uh, and I'm not a big I'm not a big black licorice fan either. So um, I'm surprised that it didn't stick out to me. But maybe it just maybe it dissipated over the last year. Maybe it. You know, <laughs> Or I'm the weird one. Or you're the weird one. I mean, let's um, be honest. Who likes black licorice? I really, I do not know why they make black licorice. But then again, I don't like Jaeger because I get that same taste. Like, I don't like Jaeger because it tastes like black licorice to me. Who like, really likes Jaeger besides when it's in a Jaeger bomb? I I didn't think anybody, but apparently people do. <laughs> they're, still, they're still around. Germans, I guess. I guess, yeah. Um, so, it, I mean, very, very good beer, though. Uh, for 13.4%. Uh, yes, you you get the rum, but it it's not a prominent thirteen point four. Um, but I like it. It's I like it a lot. I'm gonna give this. I'm gonna you know what? I'm gonna give it. 
I'm a sucker for anniversary beers too, I think. So I'm going to give it a four and a half. Um, no way. Yeah, I like it a lot. Uh, I was I was toying. I'm like probably like a four, three, nine. You round it up. Yeah, so I round it up. It's it's Mr. Oscar. You got to go big, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, well, yeah. I'll send you if if that's the case. I'll have to send you Black Butte Thirty Three. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Yes. I now that like I know where I got this beer, finally. Now that I know where I got it from. <laughs> T- so Ted has to like. He's got like a key ring with like a hundred rings, and one of those rings is one of those keys is like to the secret cellar where he has his extra extra auxiliary beer fridge where this is kept. <laughs> it's like Indiana Jones in the where they keep the Ark of the Covenant in like the miles and miles of storage. That's that's where this beer is in his house. He's lost track of it. You know when you send me when you send me Black Butte thirty three. I am now able to do a vertical tasting. That is true. If you still have 32, 32, you might have already drank it. I don't think I did. Well, let's find out. Who's checked in this beer? Because I don't think I have. <laughs> Nobody has. So, Chris, out of 2,365 check-ins, what do you think the rating is? I, hmm. That's a, that's a lot of check-ins. It's a lot more check-ins than I think I was thinking. I know Deschutes is, is a very well-liked, popular brewery. Um... Let's see. So I think it's going to be high. I don't think it's going to be four and a half high. I think we're talking above four. Um, so I'm going to do 4.17. I feel like I say 4.17 all the time. <laughs> I feel like I'm just going to keep getting. One, is that, one, year it's, one day it's going to be right. Is that your final answer? I don't like your smile, so no. I'm going to change it. Because Tud, Tud, Tud knows that I'm off by don't, over point one five. Don't 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 let Tud play mind games with you. That's your final answer. That's my final you answer. Can't change yeah. It. Okay. Yeah. I I think. <laughs> so so the untapped rating is a four point two two. Oh wow. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Cool. Put it on the board. Yeah. Fifteen tally marks. Let's go. <laughs> so that means Chris Honk 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 M O M O T P M O P T. No, no, you can't M-O-P-C. be MOPC. You can't be a man of people, Tud. Uh, uh, finally, some order has been restored to the board. Ooh, good, good job tying me. Tie, no, well, I mean, I have three, four legitimate check mark, uh, tally marks. Not, not three and one with a one with some questionable. Well, one thing that's not in dispute is I got some catching up to do. Mm-hmm. So, oh. um. But uh, before I can catch up, we have some very important Han Solos to hand out. I know. I know. I feel, I feel, guys, this is a long episode, but it's so worth it. So worth it. Well, everyone knows you go a little long for the, the spectacular. We walked all those miles on the red carpet. It's got to be worth it. That's true. That is true. That is true. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, thank you guys. Uh, for those of you that voted on Instagram, for voting in the Discord, for if you're one of our patrons sending in your sending in your ballots, thank you all so much. Um, you know, make sure, uh, you know, you're checking all those things out. You know, selfless plug right here. You know, just check all that stuff out. Join the Patreon uh, for as little as a dollar a month. You get an episode every week, uh, 20 little 20, 30 minute episode every week. Um, where we... I spend a quarter on that. Yeah. I mean, every week. right. Yeah. It's one for yeah. one quarter an episode. Um, J- for just a it... quarter. <laughs> you can feed, you can feed our beer habit for just as little <laughs> as a quarter a week. Um, and uh, when we get more patrons rolling in, we will also start doing some more additional fun things. I don't, we don't know what yet, but uh, we love our patron. And yeah, we'd love to interact more with on Patreon. But yeah. there's just we're just not enough activity. But we're lo- we're hoping to get there soon. Exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, so everybody that voted, thank you. Um, you know, we are very excited. Uh, this is always a fun time. So, uh, who wants to kick us off? What's the first? What's the first award we want to hand out? We have. Very special guest to present our first award. We have Jordan from Wreck My Podcast to present OKest Movie. Thank you, Jordan. Take it away. There's been awards for the best movies around. There's been awards for the worst movies. But Mr. Oscars is the only place you'll find an award for the most OKest movie around. Because sometimes you don't want the greatest. You don't want the worst. You just want the okayest. In this section, our nominees are Top Gun. Go check out Wreck My Podcast featuring Drinking Alone with Friends for a Top Gun episode. Also, Chappie. 
the one movie Chris has seen multiple times. And finally, Austin Powers, the international man of mystery or the spy who shagged me or whatever one they decided to put on there. And the winner of the most okayest movie around is... Chappie! That's right, everyone's favorite robot they've forgotten about, Chappie, won this award. Here you go. Here's a, what do you, what do you give away? Han Solos and Carbonite that are full size or something like that? Here you go. Have one of those. It'll really make your palace come together. Thank you, Jordan, for that award. Why? No, Chappie is so okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's definitely, it was definitely the okayest movie I think we talked about. Oh, not man. the best, not the worst. I, I guess he is the, the definition okay. of okay. <laughs> it, was, it was very okay. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very flattered. I'm flattered that that movie won. We are a, a, a Chappie fan cast, of course. So. <laughs> and yeah, wow. Jordan, as always, blowing us out of the water with his studio production levels. Yeah, I, I really... Uh... <laughs> I'm glad he I'm glad he accepts uh Venmo and uh all that stuff so we could get him on again. Um <laughs> When you're when you're no, don't give him any ideas. That's yeah, that's true. No, be our friend. <laughs> just be our regular friend, not our paid friend. <laughs> he he just wants to drink with us. We know it. Deep down inside, everybody wants to drink with us. I think so. So, next up, we bring you Kiwi Kadoda to present the game of the year. Hi. I'm Kiwi Kadota, and I'm so honored to be here to present the next Mr. Oscar for the Game of the Year. Our nominees were Valheim, Among Us, and Portal 2. The results are in, and the winner of Game of the Year is Among Us. Thank you, Kiwi, for being the presenter of that award. Congratulations yeah. to right. Among Us. Yeah. Nice. Go Among Us. Good game. It was a Great. good game. Yeah, absolutely. It, I mean, it's always it's a lot of fun. Just a lot of fun. You know. It is just and a it, good... Pick up game and go. Right, right. Just like just like Valheim. <laughs> yes, just, just like pick Valheim. it up and go. And Kiwi, thank you so much for uh, for presenting that. Make sure you check her out, Kiwi Kidota on Twitch slash everywhere. Um, as she said, she's also a very awesome beer nerd. So I also want to say that I don't think a single one of the Game of the Year nominees was released in 2020. I think that's <laughs> worth noting. <laughs> I think was Valheim not, or was Valheim released in early 2021? Uh, yeah, it was 2021 release. Well, but, I mean, uh, 2020 sucked. Let's be honest. Like, let's it's it's yeah. fitting. Well, it's we've, fitting. We've embraced Mr. Oscar. Is just the things we've talked about in the last however many episodes since the previous Mr. Oscar, uh, and even maybe a little bit before that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really anybody's guess it's what it, really, what's included it's, and what's yeah, not. It's just it's whatever. It's fine. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, of course, we are moving it. So there was a lot. A lot of issues with this category, by the way. The one that's coming up right now. Um, you know, there was a lot of people. I think they were just voting just by reading, but not reading the category. They were just reading what it was. Okay, so I just want I want to go out and I want to say that first. Chris, it's almost like you know the answer to to what who won this category. N- no, well, I there was a lot of people writing in, like like it was covered on CNN and stuff. So uh, you know, it was very confusing to people. Um, I Chris have... even came up with a hashtag stop the steal because of how kind of controversial. <laughs> That's why that was trending. I got yes. it. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I mean, that was, yeah, it was, it was crazy. Um, so uh, I apologize when I open this envelope, it's set in stone, no matter what it is. Um, but uh, so of course it's the coveted worst handle. <laughs> coveted? Uh, coveted. Yeah. Worst handle. Everybody says this is the most prestigious award on the, okay. on the podcast. <laughs> Uh, it's solo frozen and kryptonite. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the worst handle of the year nominees are canned air, which actually was uh, was a long time ago. Some say it was the worst handle. Uh, it was. It was actually on the previous mis- previous Mister Oscar episode. Right. Right. So, like we said, from Os- from Oscar to Oscar, and maybe there's some gray area, <laughs> <laughs> plus or minus six months. Um, uh, smoked meat. Thank you, Tud, for smoking meat. And Dawn Power Wash. <laughs> uh, and which, again, like we said last last week, that was a mistake. Should it should the ballots should have never been gone out? But we spent so much on production that we just With some hanging chads. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, and the winner is... Dodd Power Wash. <laughs> <laughs> it beat out canned air. That's all you need to know about that handle. I like to accept my my Han Solo frozen carbonite. Um, We'd yeah, like wait, to tell you, you it was close. Don't you send that to Dawn Corporation? Isn't that how that works? Like that goes directly to Dawn. But Procter and Gamble take that one. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Take it away, Procter and Gamble. No, um, see. I think people saw Down, Dawn Power Wash and they just clicked it. They just got, they were like, ooh, and they like got excited. They're like, they, ah, oh, it's so powerful. The washing is so good. <laughs> like, such a good wash. Oh, Lord, okay. <laughs> hey, uh, like I said, I'm taking it back. Mr. Mr. Handle 2021 right here. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> You're just going to call yourself Mr. Handle for the whole year as you come up with incredible handles. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but that. Listeners, if you go back in time and listen to that that handle review, I believe you can hear the words Chris Chris mumble the words. I don't even like this. It's just okay. No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't say that. I just said I hadn't used it a lot. <laughs> but it was it was like right over there, and Dana was telling me how good it was. <laughs> so, but anyway, I, I have won. You're just mad because I won. You're jealous. <laughs> So up next is the category of best episode title. And for that, we have a special presenter of Tud Cleo. Mr. Cleo, take it away. And the nominees are Season 3, Why Didn't You Caught Us? Two Hosts, Zero Oberts. Two Beers, Zero Oberts. Or O15, and even Beachy a Body Mon. And the winner is. Two hosts, zero oberts. Two beers, zero oberts. Call me now for your free tarot reading. <laughs> All right, thank you, thank you, Ted Cleo. And, and before you before you disappear into the the, the spirits, who's going to take home the most uh, the most Han Solos tonight? I can't ruin that for you, man. You just have to listen and find out. Okay. Hey, before you, okay. One more thing before you go. Can you t- tell Tud non Cleo what his the average is going to be for the beer he's going to rate next week, so he can get Man of the People forever? No. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> No. Okay. okay. Well, right. Wow. Thank you, Tud Cleo. Thank you for being here. Oh, Thanks for showing back up. We will let you go with that. Oh, oh man. Lord. Oh, no. Goodness. What, uh, what an incredible spirit we were able to bring on the show. That was phenomenal. Oh, so good. And she, uh, she disappeared again this year, like last year, before she could introduce the next, the next presenter. She's very flaky uh, like that. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll do it. It's uh, one of my personal favorites, uh, Crystal Malt. Crystal Malt from the Malt Minute. Hey, how you doing? How you been? Come take it away. Well, howdy, boys. It has been such a long time since you guys have rang my phone. I don't know what I did. Uh, I I thought you guys, I I mean, you guys said you'd love to watch me leave, but I didn't realize that I was going to be leaving for so long. But uh, thank you for uh, finally hitting up a ringy dingy and having me come back on. Uh, So you guys guys want me to... uh, Hand out one of these. Ooh, well, look at this thing. Ooh, look at him. I would like to have one of these in my own house, if I must say so myself. Uh, being able to look at that 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 uh, uh, frozen in Han Solo, frozen Han Solo in carbonite all the time. Oh man, I would put that right in my right at the end of my bed. It would be oh a, man, a, a very young Harrison Ford. A very oh, yeah. God, yes. hey, how how old how old is he? Thirty five in that? Oh my yeah. goodness, he is exactly thirty five. Actually, I think he would be about thirty-seven because it's a, this, it's not the first movie. But anyways, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but golly, golly, geez, oh man, who's gonna get this beautiful thing? Who is gonna get this beautiful thing? So I'm here to hand out the frozen Han Solo for scariest drink, and I don't know why. I don't know why you guys called upon me to hand out scariest drink because we all know 
the only thing scary about me is how fierce my figure is. <laughs> am I right or am I right? Uh, so our nominees are uh, Grapefruit Schafferhofer, which I think has just been on there for, I think it's just etched in stone, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Vista Bay Coconut Mango Seltzer. Those things are gross. Oh, oh, what's this one? Natty Daddy? Ooh. I think I know. I think I know which one I would pick. Maybe not as a scary drink, but maybe as like a maybe me and me, maybe me and this Han Solo. We're gonna go get ourselves some Natty Daddies. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> and the winner is. <gasps> Well, of course, of course you're going to have me come on, and I'm going to hand out uh, the Frozen on Solo to... Ooh, it's Natty Daddy. I like that. I like that. I want to I wanna take one of them Natty Daddies home and take my Han Solo, and we're just going to have a good old time. But, uh, boys, you best not. Number one, you keep your eyes on my backside as I'm walking out. Thank you very much. And number two, don't you be... Don't you be calling me only once a year. I want to be on here a little bit more. So, but bye. Okay, bye, wow. Crystal. I think uh, that was an unusual visit from Crystal Maltz. She had we haven't heard from her in a while. I wonder why. But, uh, uh, yeah, I know. Me too. I wonder. She's so hot. <laughs> uh, I can't believe I can't believe you you missed her, Chris. You left the room for just uh, a minute. It happens and, uh, all the time. God yeah. damn. Yeah. Like she. I mean, she, like, leaves me so many, like, drunk voicemails during the year. It's crazy. Uh, um, yeah. But, like, you know, it's not really, like, it, it, it's not like, uh, we just miss each other. Phone tag all the time. And then she she pops on the show. I'm not here. It's just this whole mess. But, uh, man, one day, Crystal, we'll meet. It'll be beautiful. But, hey, I, I think I heard from the bathroom that Natty Daddy won. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. That was yeah. what I had you, on the podcast. It was, it was pretty did. gross. It was pretty gross. So one star, <laughs> one star, uh, not a good one, not a good one. All right. So next up, we have another guest presenter, uh, one of our co-hosts uh, that has been on the most of the co-hosts. And that's, of course, Jenna from the Brew Locker. So, Jenna, thank you for uh, thank you for doing this and uh, take it away. Hey, guys, it is Jenna from the Brew Locker here, and I am here to announce the best episode nominees and the nominees are. Episode 100 Spectacular, One Click Accident, and TUD.org. And the winner is... Episode 100 Spectacular, congratulations! And the crowd goes wild. Thank you very much, Jenna, for announcing the best episode of the year. Um, appreciate you. Go, guys, everybody head over to At The Brew Locker on all social medias and follow jenna along also if you're a member of the discord there may be a promo code that exists out there for for jenna as well so uh head over to discord and figure out what that is too and if you want to hear more of jenna check out every 20th episode of our show where she normally lands right there and, there, uh, thereabouts yeah thereabouts yeah thanks thanks jenna um but i mean to talk about the category just real quick I mean, episode 100 was, number one, a big episode for us as a podcast. But number two, when, when I talk to people, and, and here's a pro tip for y'all, when they're like, man, there's 134 episodes of this five-star uh, podcast on Apple Podcasts. How am I ever supposed to start? Tell them episode 100. Boom. Easy. Easy peasy. It's a great episode. True. Yeah. I didn't ep- download five different recordings of harp.wave to splice into our, our recording for our flashbacks for no reason. It was a fun <laughs> one to make. I had a lot of fun with that one. Yeah. I loved our I loved our clips from throughout the years and I think this is a very well deserved best episode of the year. You know, a lot of a lot of shows, a lot of podcasts get made, but not many to make it to hundred episodes. And even less make it to hundred and thirty four laws of math. <laughs> But no, that was a that was a good one. It was a great, great ep- great episode. I guess that leaves me up next to present the uh, best handle of the year, and uh, all three nominees are Don Powerwash. That's weird. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no one knows what happened there. Um. Yeah, <laughs> Chris Chris hijacked the 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 nominations here, but uh, no, I have I have the nominees here, and uh, we have Coob Hamilton. And the Flexi Freeze Cooler. Still the best cooler on the planet. And the winner 
of best handle is... Koob. I don't know. You might want to check. check the <laughs> I, do, I do see the spreadsheet <laughs> has been modified since I last looked. The Koob, long game. You can play with your friends, throw heavy blocks of wood, drink while you're doing it. Um, this would be a great time for me to tell you which episode it was a handle on. But just trust me, it's a very fun game that you would love to play. Um, Regardless of whatever episode it was featured. Regardless of whatever episode it was featured on. Google Koob, uh, YouTube it. It's a lot of fun. It's K-U-B-B. K-U-B-B. Thank you, Todd. Speaking of Todd, he's the person I have to hand it off to to present this next Han Solo. Todd, please, please take it away for the next category. Sure thing. Thank you very much. So the next category that we are presenting is for the best bit. And the nominees are the Sour Scale. Use coupon code DAWF. As I said before, head over to Discord. There may be a coupon code over there. Or live in front of a studio audience. As you all know, you guys are live in front of this studio audience right now. And the winner (laughs) is... The Sour Scale. The, the longest running bit on the podcast has finally taken home its Mr. Oscar award. The Sour Scale has existed forever. Um, it started with two apples, both green. <laughs> <laughs> some may say some may say the same. The same apple. And, but. Yeah, some may say, but different flavors. And it has launched into every other scale on the face of the earth. We have turned everything into a scale. If you were grading this sca- this podcast on a scale of podcasts, we'd be five star. On the iTunes scale. On the iTunes scale. And so with that, let me present the next, or let me announce the next presenter, and that is Chris. Hi, Chris here. Man, hasn't it been a crazy year full of segments? If only we could award something for best segment. <gasps> What's that? A Han Solo specifically for best segment of the year. Man, what would the nominees be? Well, I'm glad you asked me, because the the nominees for Best Segment of the Year are While We Traverse, uh, The Countdown with Tud, and The Gong Gong Guy, who I think think it's been a while. It's been a while since he's been on the show, but uh, uh, the winner is... (laughs) Oh, no. He's making a comeback. (laughs) He wants wants revenge. The winner is While... You're just going to keep playing the gong so you can't announce the winner. While we traverse. <laughs> oh. Oh, he's, somebody he's, has thoughts about that. That, that one That one was, I, I could tell, it was like a, he was disappointed, but also like pretty uh, impressed by how good while we traverse was. So mm-hmm. uh, It was like a gong of defeat. A gong, yeah, it was like, yeah, a gong of defeat. Um, but yeah, no. <laughs> It seems as though we're going to have to bring back While We Traverse uh, in some way, shape, or form. Everybody loved it. I mean, fan favorite. It, yeah. It, it, ran the, it ran the tables. Ran the tables. While We Traverse, the segment where we learned that in Georgia you can't sell beer in the window of a gas station. <laughs> where we learned some states have just ridiculous laws about where and when alcohol can be sold. Uh it was a really fun. It was a fun tour around this country. It was very difficult getting to Hawaii in that beautiful Chevy Traverse <laughs> <laughs> with, with seating for how many, Chris? Uh, wow, uh, depends. If you have the bucket seats like me in the back, because you know, p- primo, um, you can fit up to seven comfortably. That's two car seats, two, two adults, and a full bench back seat. Come on now, how are you going to do that? <laughs> how are you going to do that in any other car? It's crazy. Um, and still keep above twenty mpg. I wow. Actually, I Tell think, me I, think more. It's, I think it's eighteen. <laughs> Still near twenty. Near twenty. If near round, twenty. Like if you round up, you round up to if you round up to the nearest twenty, it's twenty. You know, like the Chevy Traverse <laughs> featuring twenty-ish highway MPG and twenty-ish city <laughs> MPG. <laughs> Uh, so spacious, so spacious. I will say, as a family of four who always has to bring their kids everywhere, as well as everything kids needs, we have plenty of room. <laughs> Drove all the way to Connecticut and back. It's crazy. 
And, you know, we have we have many more Han Solos to hand out. And uh, next is a very, very special award um, that goes out to just truly the worst people on the face of the planet every year. P- people, right. places, things, doesn't nouns, nouns of all kinds. <laughs> <laughs> every noun imaginable is every, eligible for this award. Every noun imaginable is, 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 is uh, eligible. Um, but we have a very special presenter. So here to present the Blevin Lifetime D Achievement Award is Blevin. So Ooh. Blevin, take it away. Boo. Boo. Blevin, Boo. take it away. <laughs> Hi, everyone. This is Blevin, voted Mr. Oscar fan favorite co-host. And I was Venmoed $50 to present the Blevin Lifetime D Achievement Award. And the nominees are Blevin, COVID-19, and the NFL CBA. I'm going to open up this envelope here to see who the winner is. It looks like it's the NFL CBA. Congrats. Boy, am I glad that he's gone. I know. It, it, really, it really took the podcast down. It really did. Yeah. If you're yeah. still here, if you're still here after hearing that, um, thank you for sticking around. Clearly, you fast forwarded or I don't know, maybe. <laughs> it's you... why we always have one, one mile of the 35 miles is black carpet. <laughs> that's just that's the Blevin the Blevin section. The Blevin we, section. We just try and get past it as fast as we can. Exactly. Yeah, we we sprint yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, and it's no surprise the NFL CBA takes home the Blevin Lifetime Achievement Award. It was just terrible yes. all year. Fuck the CBA. Fuck the we CBA. We can all say that. <laughs> um. So it's uh. Yeah. I'm okay. On to greener pastures. Am I right or am I right? Can only go up from you here. Could only be more right. So up next is. The award for the best sound effect presented by me, Tud, master of the soundboard. If you would like sound to get effect a, guy, the sound effect guy. If you would like sound effects for your podcast, feel free to reach out to me at tud.org. <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't go to tud.tud. We weren't able to secure that one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> at tud. Uh, <laughs> Just send an email at tud.org. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen the email address start with the the at symbol, but this one does. This one does. It's the magic of Tud.org. And the nominees are the Jaws sound. Shout out to our boy Steven. The honk. Honk, 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 honk. And careless whisper sax music. And the winner is the honk. Honk, 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 honk. Here to accept the honk, honk, honk. Here to accept the award is the honk itself. Honk, take it away. Honk, 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 it's time to rip that honk right off the stage. It's, yeah, the the warp the wrap up music. <laughs> the cane with the hook has come out. <laughs> oh, beautiful sentiment, though. Really. Yeah. Uh, so next we have another special guest presenter, um, the lovely L from at Sip on What on Instagram has uh, come to hand out our next award. So L, go ahead and take it away. Hey guys, I'll hear from Sip on What on Instagram. I have the Mr. Oscar or Senor Oscar best drop in nominees way <laughs> mug of wisdom. <laughs> I like beer and it's beer 30 and I'm thirsty. And the winner is the mug of wisdom. Thank you, Elle, for presenting the category. And thank you, Jordan, for that drop. And to accept the award, we have Jordan here. He stuck around from earlier. So Jordan, take it away with the acceptance speech. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for all the accolades. I can't believe I won. This just goes to show you that anyone can win. If even a white heterosexual male from middle class America could make it, I mean, why couldn't anyone make it? I would like to thank First off, Warner Brothers Media for allowing instrumental versions of their copyrighted music on the internet so I was able to make this song. 
I'd also like to thank the Drinking Alone with Friends crew, because without you, I would have just been making this song for imaginary friends, and that would have been crazy. And also, finally, I'd like to thank Pete and apologize to Pete because I stole his gong gimmick. But don't worry, Pete's doing okay. You can find him down at your local P.F. Chang's playing the gong every 15 minutes. So he's, he's living the dream right now. So that all worked out in the end. But thank you, everyone, for voting for me to win the best drop for Mug of Wisdom. And hey, go check out wreckmypodcast.com. And check out Wreck My Podcast. And do stuff like that. Okay, thanks. Bye. Thank you so much, Jordan, for joining us and giving us your speech. We appreciate the Mug of Wisdom every single week here on this podcast. I will say, when I uh, when I told some friends about the podcast, and they listened, they're like, and they, they like messaged me as they were listening, and they were like, man, the Mug of Wisdom sound, like, sound drop is like, it bops. And it's like, yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, ignore the three co-hosts, but uh, the, the MB3 we put in. Yeah. That somebody else made is the best part of the best show. Best part of the show. <laughs> dead out of dead. So we're down to the very end to of the, the awards ceremony. The big boys. The big boys, some might say. Uh, Chris's <laughs> son might say that. See, Chris Jr. might might say we're at the big boys awards. Because um, we only have two left, best beer and best brewery. But uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. We reviewed like 150-ish beers over the last year and these three made it to the very end as the best of the best we have four nominees the rusty nail by fremont brewing the barrel aged defensive pancake by divine barrel brewing company and disintegration two by root and branch brewing now after a much contentious voting period we have our winner here open the envelope It is the Rusty Nail by Fremont. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. I have one of those in my house. I gave a 475, and I wish I gave a 5. I'm very much looking forward to the 2021 release. If I'm able to snag one for each of you, I will. This is, I think, a 100-point beer on Beer Advocate. Oh, wow. So, so much admiration for this one. Um, my favorite beer of 2020. I hope you guys enjoy yours when you get a chance to try it. But I think this is very well earned. Not not to um, not to speak any less of the other nominees. I think that we've all learned that Divine Barrel makes an amazing beer and uh, very very late entry uh, disintegration too. But Tud's best beer he's had in a long time from Root and Branch. So you know some excellent excellent nominees for this category for sure. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm really excited to try the one I have. It's it's sitting behind me. I, I've i almost put it in the fridge a number of times, but I don't know. It's one of those beers where I'm like, I don't know what the right occasion is. Like, do I just do I just like, hey, I have it one day, just like hanging out on stream or whatever, or do I have it on the pregame? Who knows? Like, who knows? Like, It, it has to almost be an event, I feel like. That's how I right? – that's why I, I have not drink it. There's two – acceptable answers three i'll say one it's your birthday that's fine turning 99 is is a good answer but i was gonna say wedding wedding anniversary you cook up that nice filet mignon steak maybe do a little surf and turf with some lobster tail some shrimp serve this like 38 degrees pour some for you and your respective wives no no i don't i don't want to share this beer the other answer is like (laughs) check-in x thousand like Uh, however many the next thousandth beer you don't want to share with your wives. Uh, you're like, had just drank four beers that day to get from 39.66 to 39.99, and you're ready to, to check in 4,000. Uh, this would be a great one to check in. So I don't know. You guys, you guys check it in, but please, please bring it to the show when you do, because I want to hear your thoughts. You don't have to bring it, not bring it to the show, but bring your thoughts to the show. I, well, about- I, all of those are good ideas. Uh, I, I'm, I'm afraid that it's going to be so good that it's also going to win Best Beer at Mr. Oscar 2022, if one of us have it on the podcast. It is possible. (laughs) It's possible for it to go back to back, but uh, I'm excited from everything I've heard about it. And I can't wait to try 2021 and do it in a a vertical. Mix them. Oh, there you go. Uh, June, it's coming out. It better be. It came out June last June. I'm going to buy another another couple. I will collect my bottle in July. All right. 
Um, but it's the last nominee of the night. We're, uh, we see they're rolling up the red carpet now. It's like the diameter of the valets are getting all the cars warmed up. It is uh, time for Best Brewery. Again, fierce competition here for the last category. We have Drecker Brewing, Resident Culture, and Abomination. And uh, we, we said this in the nomination show, but we had all three of us had, each of, had beers from each of these breweries. So this is a very impartial voting. And after much deliberation, the winner is... Damn it, Pete. It's always got to get the last one. <laughs> Drecker. Drecker nice. Brewery. Um, they they came in strong with their IPAs. They they finished with their sours, their brain sours. There was a lot of fan favorites. Drecker's one that you can find in Fargo, but a, they distribute a lot through Beer Drop and other places. Um, look out for Drecker near you. I love it. The co-hosts love it. What do you guys think about this turn of events? I mean, three awesome breweries, obviously. Like, I love, don't get me wrong, I no- I loved and nominated Resident Culture, and I voted for Drecker. Like, that just says, <laughs> that says, <laughs> that says a lot, because um, Dana and I, not that long ago, we were doing, like, a group hangout in Discord, and, like, I popped open some of those sours, and Dana's finally coming onto the sour train right now, so she's, like turning herself around and uh those those brains sours oh my god i thought i i was it was one of the best sours. i, I think i gave it a four and a half four seven five on untapped like i it, they were so so good um and like abominations amazing too like i like drinking that stuff best, up in connecticut like goodness one of the best ipas i had in 2020 the wandering into the fog from abomination it, it is incredible yeah. it is so good um, it was a close vote too. They, you know, that's a, that's the best part is that Abomination came in a very close second um, as far as Instagram voting and Discord voting goes. So right. they are getting the recognition they do deserve as well. Um, but yeah, there's there was no easy choice in that one. Um, there's no wrong choice in no, that, no wrong that category either. Yeah, if, if you had a beer from all three of them, you would be one happy camper. Yeah, I mean, I will say, sure. like you know. I, I talked about Res, uh, Drecker. Their sours won me over, but you go to Resident Culture. Their IPAs are top notch. They're out of this world. They're so good. Their sours also really, really, really good. Maybe I have to revote. But anyways, uh, <laughs> like it's it, it's it, I don't know. It's such a tough category. We had the same dilemma last year, I think, where we had like three ridiculously amazing breweries, and just like oh, you. This is always always one of our most contentious, but in a good way categories. This is one where we. We just love to highlight the best breweries we've had in the last year. Right. And uh, I love, I love, we are in the best brewing age ever. This is the best time to be a brewer, the best time to drink craft beer in the world. And uh, we're just happy to bring these on the podcast. We're lucky that we get to talk about these amazing world-class breweries. Some of the best beers ever brewed. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, just I, I just popped open the spreadsheet from last year and like, burial other half in southern grist like we are just in the those age. aren't bad either <laughs> yeah we're just in no. the age of amazing <laughs> amazing breweries it's crazy um but you know drecker congratulations you're han solo um you can come it's pick in the it mail up. you can come no nope, you can you nope you have to come pick it up we can't pay yeah, we, we, we don't oh, we can't afford that that shipping cost yeah we you have to come get it in florida it's fine it'll be waiting you for know, you it's at you raymond know, james we, stadium um if we get this offensive line to carry it up there and we go with them we can also go visit drecker and get more beer and they can, the offensive oh, line can carry yeah. it back for us yes yes i we're on to something finally but man mr oscars 2021 it's or mr i'm sorry blasphemous mr oscar 2021 in the books uh unbelievable enjoy if you if you won a han solo congratulations if you didn't come back next year we, we'll, we'll we'll do it all again yeah it's our favorite our favorite time of the year um but we really gotta move on we are, we're gonna go through our frosty mug real quick um jordan take it away test your handle test your handle Mug of Wisdom! Drink. Mug of Wisdom! 
Log of Wisdom! Finish that Lovato. Thank you, Jordan. As always, wreck my podcast. Also presenter um, and winner at and Mr. Winner. And winner for that exact Mr. Drop. Oscar. All that stuff. Uh, M O T P. Christopher, take it away. Who's going first? You know what? I don't do this very often, but I am going to go first because I have a handle this week. <laughs> so I know we are a big fan of snacking. I know we've talked about snacks before on the podcast. I have a, I have a, 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 a new snack that we, we, we stumbled upon. I think it was on a TikTok or something. Dana found them. Um, and they're, uh, they're available at your local Aldi. And I'm telling you what, y'all, they are fire. So uh, there's an Aldi brand. Uh, I think it's Chocure or Chaucer or something like that. C-H-O-C-E-U-R. Um, and they're just mini peanut butter cups. So like a Reese's mini peanut butter cups. Um, however, they cut, co- they come in a bag. They're not wrapped. And let me just say, these things are delicious. Um, I prefer them to the Reese's mini, mini peanut butter cups. One, 10 times out of 10, which is saying something. Cause I love Reese's, uh, and the, the peanut butter, like the peanut butter to chocolate ratio is like fire. And um, the peanut butter is like more of like it's it's more like creamy than uh, a Reese's. So um, hmm. I I love them. Uh, we, when she goes and she gets a bag, uh, they're gone in like a day or whatever because we just you can't stop eating them. CJ loves them, so it's for, uh, for the whole family. Um, so so when you say ten out of ten, that's like how many you eat in one handful? Yes. <laughs> They, okay. Ten out of ten make it into my mouth. Um, okay, <laughs> they're mini, so I must. I'm. I'm probably gonna love them too, given yeah. that I love mini snacks. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. If you if you're the kind of person that thinks, oh man, a muffin is way too cumbersome or whatever, then like <laughs> this is perfect for you. Uh, <laughs> you're speaking my language. Uh, no, but they are really, really good. Um, I highly suggest uh, checking them out. Uh, you can buy. I, I don't even know how much the bags are, but um, I think we bought five bags last time. She <laughs> went shopping. They're good. Holy and, shit! And uh, <laughs> and pro tip, especially if you live in the south like me. Throw them bad boys in the fridge, okay? Keep them in the fridge so they stay nice and cold and, you know, they don't, no chance of melting, any of that. So check them out. Uh, the Aldi brand peanut butter cups, they are solid. Very good. Chalk cheer. Chalk cheer. Chalk cheer. Chalk cheer. Chalk cheer. Chalk So there you go. They're really, really good. Um, Chalk cheer. I'm going to hand it, I'm going to hand it off this week to Obert. Obert can go next. Thank you, Chris. I got to say, I guarantee that handle will not be on the worst handle of the year, 2022. I'm telling you, and Mr. Handles 2021, up, let's go. I'm following up with a handle that I also will be guarantee won't be worst handle of the year. It's an iPhone app. It's a game. It meets all my re- re- requirements for good iPhone games, which means no ads, no microtransactions, nothing that's going to cause me to wait five minutes to play the game. I can just keep playing all day. Very important. It's called, it's called Golf on Mars. And it's like a 2D side-scrolling golf game where you just like touch and drag your finger and uh, it shoots a little golf ball on a little Martian golf course. It's all the, the, the sand is rust colored and you have to get it in the, the hole. The thing I like about this game is it's not like how well can you do in 18 holes. It's just a never-ending golf course. It's like the whole planet Mars is one golf course. I'm currently on hole 2322. And my cumulative score score is 6,711 strokes. So it's not like the kind of thing where you care too much about what your score is. Um, <laughs> but it's just a, like a really simple, fun game to play when you're trying to kill some time. Um, I love it. Golf on Mars, it was like two bucks. So yeah, that's it. Sweet. Chris has got it. What is it on Android? Uh, two, what two, does it cost? 299 $2.99. Three, 
three bucks, three it bucks. Also co- it also costs two ninety nine on Apple. Well worth every penny that I paid for it. Less than a cent a hole at this point I'm on. So, um, yeah, golf on Mars. Have fun. Todd, take it away. Yeah, so my handle this week is um, a new item that I just bought last week off of Amazon. Um, it's it's really helped me with uh, hiking. So I'm training to go out to visit Obert in the summer. And this has been something that has been very helpful to me the, the times I've used it. And that is a, a set of hiking poles. Um, really helpful for climbing up really steep hills. I highly recommend it. Uh, the way I described it, I believe in a text message to Chris and Obert was that it's it's like cheating for hiking because it makes hiking up steep hills significantly easier than it used to be because you can use either one pole or two poles. I prefer the one pole method to help hoist yourself up off of, on steep cliffs. Yeah, I have been tempted to make this a handle before. Um, there's a lot of different brands out there. What which what did you end up with, Todd? I bought honestly the cheapest one I could buy. Um, works just great, fantastic. You know, they're they're adjustable to my height, so I like it to where my elbow is not at full ninety degrees. I like it to be a little bit more bent to help me give a little bit more leverage as I'm climbing up. So they are definitely tall enough for me, as you know, and almost probably with shoes on a six foot tall person. Yeah, I think a lot of times when you're hiking. Your legs are doing all the work. Your upper body's doing nothing. I've always thought of hiking poles as a way to kind of even that load out. Let your legs do a little bit less of the work. Let your arms take some of the load to kind of even it out a little ways. And um, it helps me reduce my swelling in my hands that I have when I'm hiking. It, it kind of gives your cardiovascular system a little bit more um, more circulation. And I'm a huge fan. I think Tud's not alone recommending this handle. I could go on all day. And the the uh, the the one I bought was called the Fit Life. So it, what it what makes this one unique is it comes with interchangeable tips for different types of terrain. So you know you can adjust to what you're going to be climbing up. I personally use the one that looks like a boot as my the base of mine. But there are other tips as well that you could use if that did not fit your your hiking style. I guess. Very nice. And so with that, we'd like to thank you all for listening. Um, first of all, thank you for listening to Mr. Oscar's 2021 edition. Uh, thank you to everybody who presented today. Um, you know, Jenna, Kiwi, L, Jordan. I think Crystal. that's Crystal. Crystal, Tud Cleo. And I think that's about it. Uh, you know, thanks to us. us. Thanks to us, us three. Um, You're welcome. And, you know, as always, we're going to thank the breweries that provided today's beers. I will thank Omnipolo for their... I gotta take a breath before I say this. Blueberry, blackberry, raspberry, strawberry, maple, pancake, glassy goes. I would like to thank Deschutes Brewing uh, for the Black Butte 32. And thank you, Obert, for sending it. And I want to thank Bombastic Brewing for the murder on Drury Lane. Please make sure you go over to all social media and follow us at DAWF Podcast. Um, also, make sure you head over to Discord and follow us there. Um, if you are a follower on Discord, that's where you're going to get a chance to vote on next year's Mr. Oscars 2022 edition. Also, make sure you head over to Patreon and subscribe for as little as 25 cents a week. Kind of deals that, folks. You know, helps our drinking habits, helps, helps you guys get extra content from us. Helps you get a vote in Mr. Oscar 2022 next year. That counts as an equal vote to the three co-hosts. Um, also, please make sure that you go follow Wreck My Podcast by Jordan. Um, that can be found on every podcast app as well. Thank you, Jordan, for presenting. Please make sure you go follow at The Brew Locker and at Sip on What as well. And at Kiwi Kadota. Thank you again for uh, everybody listening to Mr. Oscar's 2021 edition. And congratulations to all the winners. And finally, fuck Blevin. And with that, my name's Tud. My name's Chris. And I'm Obert. And remember, if you're drinking alone, do it with friends. We gotta get those buccaneers rolling up this red carpet. We have a, we got a lot of yet to do. <laughs> miles and miles of rolling to do. That is true. Yeah. So, yep, uh, always. Got to get there. But before we put the red carpet away entirely, Blevin did send over this other Blevin Achievement Award. He really was adamant he needed to present. You know, I told him he couldn't do it on the, the main show, but maybe for our dedicated listeners, we can put it here. Uh, Blevin, what, uh, what do you got for us? Hi, everyone. This is Blevin, voted Mr. Oscar fan favorite co-host. I'm here to present the Blevin Lifetime Achievement Award. And the nominees are 
Obert, Chris, and Tud. And uh, open up this envelope here to see who the winner was. And wow, this is this has never happened before. I, th- I think this is a a podcast first, but it looks like all three of you got a thousand points. So it looks like all three of you win the. 11 Lifetime Achievement Award. Congratulations, guys.